What's up, everyone? I'm GKB, a.k.a. The Governor, and I'm also joined today by my co-host of the Console Corner and the First Lady of Xbox, She-Wolf. Today on Gamers Know Best, we will be having a great discussion and review of the much-anticipated game called Song of the Deep. Is this game worth your time and money? Let's get into the video and find out. Song of the Deep at its core is a 2.5D side-scrolling puzzle platformer developed by Insomniac Games and published by GameStop. That's right, you heard me correctly, GameStop is publishing this title. You play as a young girl named Marin, who had a tragedy befall upon her. She had lost her father at sea, so she decides to build a submarine and search for her father. She dives to the depths of the sea, finding interesting uh, friends and creepy monsters along the way on her journey to find her missing father. All right, so let's get into our first category for our discussion slash review, and that is the eye candy. What did we think of the art style and overall graphic fidelity of Song of the Deep? Uh, we're going to go ahead and start with Sheetwolf on this one. What did you think of the graphics? Okay, so I just want to start off by talking about the overall art itself. It's cute, and it's almost friendly, like a welcoming child's book that you used to read with your mom. Their color palettes were amazing, with the blues and the purples bringing that underwater feeling to the game was just great. And I also have to give credit to the lighting, whether you were in a dark cave or whether you were just in the open water just was absolutely amazing to me. Yeah, like I agree there, like the, the water, all the colors and everything were like fantastic. But I want to bring it back to like the beginning, um, like the UI um, is super simple and pleasing to the eye. I love that the game carries this like maritime theme throughout the whole thing like even the fonts themselves like you know when you're going through like the menus and everything they have like this nautical feel to them um, I really love that attention to detail in games like even the icons when you go uh, to the little crab thing to upgrade your weapons and stuff uh, for your submarine the, all the icons look like um, map icons from like back in the day from like when pirates and Christopher Columbus were like sailing the ocean and they had like serpents and stuff it's it's done in that kind of art and I really really enjoy that kind of stuff well definitely speaking of the details that they brought to this game if you paid attention to like the plants and even the rocks that you swam by the textures in them and how vibrant the colors that they mixed together to bring those to the front line of the game itself was just outstanding. Yeah, I that was kind of my next point that I was going to go into is like I love how the background to um, like add so much depth to the game. Um, like you could see like far back of like all these interesting um, like trinkets and stuff that are on these like you know uh, coral and stuff like that. Uh, I think it's really beautiful and honestly I always find myself like stopping and just like looking at it and seeing what's there. Um, I really love the, the polish of this game. Even the creatures, if we go into the details about how the creatures looked, they had a fresh look to them but they still kept to a natural feel of what you would actually ex expect to see under the sea and that was one of the things I loved most about it was just seeing the different creatures that you ended up having to come across. It's pretty funny, like, our points are almost, like, spot on right now. Like, I, I thought going into um, this, we would see, like, a lot of sharks and, like, um, just basics, uh, you know, sea animals. Um, but I agree, too. Like, I think the devs, like, added a lot of variety to the sea creatures. Um, like, if you think about, like, the sea itself is, you know, full of different species of, like, fish and all kinds of stuff like there. And this game does a great job of uh, bringing those creatures into um, the game um, as, well, like, enemies and stuff that you can kind of fight and everything. Good. Well, I definitely agree. I just like that the fact that they didn't bring in, you know, like, the dolphins, the sharks, the standard right, right. creatures that you would see in a game like this. They brought, like, the creepy bug-eyed fish, and they brought in, you know, the jellyfishes and stuff the like that. sea urchins and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I was, wor I was worried about the same thing, too, like... Um, I thought there was going to be like sharks and everything too, but I'm glad that they, they brought in some like, you know, the jellyfish and to have like these electrical fields and all that kind of stuff. I thought that was really cool. <laughs> I did enjoy though, speaking of the background, you actually did see like sharks and all that swimming in, you know, the shadow of them swimming in the background, which I thought that aspect of it was great, but they didn't bring it into the actual game itself. Yeah. Yeah. They're not like the main characters or enemies or anything like that. Um, cool. Um, I want to go into like some of the level design. 
Um, I think it's great. Um, I like how you start off like, you know, just below the surface of the ocean, like where there's a lot of shipwrecks and stuff like that. And then as you progress through each part and go into the new maps, you know, it starts to change where you go um, into like caves and like you go into this forgotten civilization um, with like crazy tech in it, which I thought was like super interesting. Um, as a gamer, I really like this kind of uh, level design because it keeps it fresh every time you go to a new area. It's not like the same old thing over and over and over again, which you know, in a like an underwater game can kind of happen because it's, you know, just underwater and shipwrecks and stuff. But this game does a really good job of giving you variety there. Well, they definitely brought together like the seahorse that you see, you know, you can actually see the gears moving in it and yeah. they brought the texture to this showing you that it's, it's not just a simple seahorse that, you know, it was robotic. And like you said, there are the little trinkets and the treasure chests and stuff like that, that, you know, actually bring out the color and bring out the vibrantness of this game. Yeah, I agree. And, and, and stepping on that to that like vibrantness uh, of this game like the lighting for me and you touched on this a little bit earlier um is by far one of the best things of this game like the devs use light in such a great way um and they're very subtle in the use of it too um games like like, like a lot of side scrollers and stuff usually the lighting falls kind of flat or just one tone throughout the game where this has like you know it starts off like pretty bright and then as you go further down into the ocean it gets darker you know much like you know the natural ocean um kind of does the deeper you go the darker it gets um and i thought that was really awesome that they kind of pulled that off as well all right awesome that was a great discussion about the graphics i think um overall she wolf and i really enjoyed the the graphics of this game so we're gonna go ahead and move on to our next uh category um, let's go ahead and get into gameplay. This is the most important category of them all. Um, if your gameplay sucks, you simply just will not have a good time playing the game. Um, so let's go ahead and see how we like the gameplay. Um, so there's a lot to talk about on the gameplay of this game. Like, first, the sub is fantastic. It moves great. I really like that they added like the boost to the sub, and you're not just driving at one speed all over the place. You know, you can. Uh, boost around to um, get all over the place and uh, that's kind of important too because you have to do a lot of backtracking in this game um, so it helps you to get through stuff a lot faster that you've already played um, and as well they added um, these warp zones where you can warp to different parts of the map which really helps you because um, a lot of the the pieces that you need to get to progress through the story you have to backtrack to you know the first part of the map when you first started playing or another part on the other side so i thought that was really cool i definitely have to agree when it comes to the map the simplicity of it was just great whether it was showing you where the treasures were or showing you where to go next and that was definitely one of the things that i loved most about this map because i i don't like when you end up getting those maps that are so detailed and they're so hard to understand but this one it wasn't so when you actually speak about the map and you know the warps and stuff like that it, it shows you straight this is where you need to go this is where you need to go and then it gives you a list of when you click on these warps to find where you need to go much easier yeah i agree uh you know i that's the kind of like the whole theme like i was talking about like in the beginning with the ui it's like it's very simple it's very pleasing it's very easy to use um and the map carries that whole like maritime theme to it as well even though it's kind of like underwater um it still has that um but i was i wanted to go ahead and touch on some of the um the sub mechanics like i think um they work really great i think the grappling hook um is your go-to for almost all situations um you use it for everything like puzzle solving and all that um you also have like torpedoes magma bombs freeze bombs um sonar as well um they're all used in one way or another to help you with the puzzles or to help you navigate uh certain areas um and destroy even the monsters of the deep so i, I really enjoyed all the mechanics of the sub I definitely agree. The sub definitely was a lot easy to move around. That was one of my biggest worries was usually when you're in water, you have so much issues trying to get from one end to another, but they made this easily to move around. Almost like you're not actually swimming in water, but you have the illusion that you're swimming in water. Yeah. Um, and I also liked, you know, because they start off the game like, 
you're building a sub, you know, you're going to go underwater in this sub. So you, you really think that you're going to be in the sub the whole time. But eventually you unlock an ability where Marin can actually get out of the sub and she's kind of in her scuba gear um, and you're able to move around with her, which really helps as well to get through um, a lot of areas and find treasure. And um, they also add that into the puzzle solving as well, which I thought was really interesting and a lot of fun and enjoyable. Um, I like how she also gets abilities on top of the sub like she gets the the knife and she's also able to grapple things so um and the knife helps you in like uh opening up areas like you have to cut these like i guess coral away or whatever and to be able to get into some of these zones so i thought it was really cool <clears throat> well that's definitely where you know the backtracking like you were talking about comes into play because a lot of these perks that you get throughout the game they they don't help you when you first start start off. You end up coming to so many spots where you're trying to get the treasure and you can't get in. So you have to. That's where like the backtracking definitely comes in and the abilities that they get. You have to like get these and then you're able to go and retrieve all these different forms of treasures and stuff that you had to miss. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, you're definitely spot on with that with the whole backtracking and getting all that stuff which you definitely need because you have to upgrade your abilities and stuff like that so going back and getting all that treasure is really good um let's go ahead and move on to uh some of the puzzles like i think this is where the gameplay really starts to take off uh for me as for me in general um i think the puzzles are fantastic in this game they go from simple like uh, you pull the lever uh, to multi-stage uh, puzzles using lights and mirrors and Marin's abilities. Um, you have to use all of them in concession to you know get to the next area. I find the puzzles you know tough, but not to the point where you're like throwing your controller or want to quit the game. Um, and when you do actually get through to some of these tougher puzzles and you figure them out. You know, I always felt like, oh man, I solved that puzzle. Like you feel that, you know, accomplishment <laughs> feeling. Oh um, my god, that that's pretty much exactly what I I have I was going to say. It was, you know, it's pretty much all This game is built on puzzles. We all know that these style of games are for their puzzles and that's the layouts of them. And there was moments where in the game I felt like I had to actually backtrack just to figure out where the puzzle started. But then once I did get it, like you, I felt so accomplished that I did something great and I got through it with using just my mind. Yep, I agree. 100%. Um, you know, and it reminds me of like Limbo and all those types of games with these puzzles. Um, not maybe as frustrating. Even Ori. Um, Ori was a super difficult game, super, super tough. Um, this is not on that level, um, but has that sophistication with the puzzle system as like Ori does. Um, but I want to go ahead and move on to um, some of the bosses um, and the mini bosses in this game. Uh, I won't go into too many spoilers or anything like that. So if you guys are just playing it, I won't ruin anything for you. But Song of the Deep has, you know, mini bosses and regular bosses. Um, what I like about the bosses is, um, you know, it's not just shoot the bad guy in the face with your like torpedoes or anything like that. Or, you know, knock down their health bar so they disappear. I really like that. The devs took the abilities that Marin has, the sub has, and all that, and you have to use these abilities to defeat the bosses. Um, I don't want to. This this boss is kind of early on. I won't spoil it too much, but you know, there's like something hanging above uh, this boss, and you have to go pull these things out while it's like shooting stuff at you and and everything else. And it's just a refreshing take on bosses, and I really enjoyed it. Well, I liked also just the simplicity of the movements of the bosses, and I also really enjoyed, like you said, how easy it was to, you know, have to move around and really think to yourself, what do you need to do to defeat this, but it wasn't overwhelming. And that was one of my biggest concerns in games like these are, is the boss going to turn out to be overwhelming where you just can't beat it and then you just put the game down and you don't go back to it, but it's not. And that's one of the things I enjoy most. Yeah, I agree. Like, uh, we played a lot of, like, indie games where, you know, the, the levels were kind of, like, boring. And then the bosses ended up being, like, super hard and super difficult to uh, to beat. And this has, like, that, you know, per not, I don't want to say perfect balance, but a really good balance 
of you know nice level design with a nice boss um, and you know easy to overcome you know all those challenges all right so uh, now that we finished the gameplay topic we're gonna go ahead and move on to our last category of our game discussion slash review before we give our final verdict and that is the story um, but we're not going to give any spoilers away. Uh, we're going to, you know, talk lightly about the story. So if anybody hasn't played it yet, you can go ahead and enjoy that story. Um, so what did we think about the story? I'm going to go ahead and let she will start on this one. Well, I first want to start off by, I'm sure much like a lot of people can relate somewhat to this little girl who wouldn't want to go save their father if they were lost at sea. They they would want to feel like they are empowered enough that they could do something like that. And even the music that they brought into this story just made it so relaxing in the mood where you were able to fully enjoy what was happening and what she was trying to accomplish. And even the narrator, she just had this smooth sounding voice when she was telling the story and what this little girl was going through and what she was trying to find without giving any spoilers about it. You know, she's a 12 year old girl who's trying to save her dad. Yeah, like I really agree with you. Like um, the the narration is like really smooth and, and really well done. But like when I go into like reviews, I try to go into them with no expectations of the game at all, like to give it a fair review. I went into this game like thinking there wouldn't be much of a story and man was I wrong. Not only does it like it have a great story, but also with the narration like she was mentioning, like they really dive into the lore of the game and fill in those spots of, of characters and stuff. So it's really refreshing that, you know, this is, you know, a cheap title, like indie title, if you will. Um, but they they took a lot, they put a lot of thought into the game and, and the story and, you know, building upon all that and made it really cohesive and really draws you in. Well, uh, speaking of how it draws you in, I like most of how most of these style of games they do the cutscenes which this game did have and again they remind me much of like children's stories the way that they looked and the way that they felt but at the same time while you're playing through this game this narrator is telling you bits and pieces of her story telling you when you come up to something that this is what this little girl has found now what is she going to find next to lead her to her father or what happened with her father and Something like that, I definitely think, brought a little extra to the story because you get to hear it while you're playing the game. Yeah, I agree. Like, I didn't really touch on that because uh, you touched on it in the graphics section, but um, the whole like storybook, it's almost like turning pages kind of thing, telling the story. Uh, I also thought that was really ingenious. Um, they're trying to appeal to a lot of different people um, when doing that. But I also wanted to talk about like some of the supporting cast. You know, we touched on like the seahorse and stuff like that earlier. Um, I like seeing the different characters in this game. Um, what's really cool is, like we said before, like with you know the, with the narration, and they fill a lot of that backstory of each of these characters, and they give them context in this world. Um, but it also adds like a lot of depth to the characters without the characters really you know saying much or really doing anything and they're not just like you know basic place placeholder npcs um just to help you along in your journey you know they really have like substance to the game i definitely agree and i i like the the variety of characters that they brought in to help her you know through each section of each scene and what they, you know, represented to her. And I, I really find that they brought this story to life while in the time that they had. Yeah, I agree. Um, like I said, we, I don't want to go too long into the story section because I don't want to spoil it for anybody. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, end the story part with this. Like, um, it is really a heartwarming tale um, about a girl trying to find her father. Um, it's really good and adds so much to the game. I think Insomniac did a great job uh, building this game from the, the story um, to the world itself. Like, I, I really think they did a great job on this one. All right, so that was a great talk, uh, but now we want to go into what everybody's been waiting for is our verdict. Do you buy, sell, or straight flush this turd down the crapper? So let's go ahead and get into what our pros and cons were. Let's start with the cons. For me, I gotta say, as you're playing through the game, um, the story has uh, cutscenes, 
Well, for me, and I don't know if this is for anybody else, this is just my experience with it, um, I, f I saw that the like the loading of the cutscene took really a long time. Like I, I felt like I was at like this black screen waiting for it to load for like 30 seconds or so. Um, and it kind of was a bit jarring and took me out of the immersion of the game, which kind of sucks because this game really has an engaging story. Um, that's one of my cons. Um, the other one is, um, there's some bugs in this game. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. Like, there's some issues with textures not working, um, treasures and creatures getting stuck in walls and, and stuff like that. So I think they could have spent a little bit more time with, um, you know, the, uh, the game testers and stuff to really iron out some of those bugs. They're not game breaking at all, but it did kind of, you know, you're, when you're trying to collect all this money and treasure and stuff to get your upgrades, you know, it's kind of a little frustrating. I definitely agree with the bugs. I, I had issues with the bombs where the bombs wouldn't blow up. So I had to like shut the game off completely and load it back up just so the bombs would start. Um, but for me, I actually had I had a couple cons. Um, again, this is just my personal experience. It may not happen with others, but um, one of my issues was actually the grappling hook. When you picked up things and had to throw it in a certain direction, mm -hmm. I never could get it to actually go exactly where I wanted it. The grappling hook wouldn't let go of it, or maybe it was just a bug, I don't know. But that was one of the biggest issues I had, was the grappling hook and trying to throw things. It was just... It was not that simple to use, in my opinion. <laughs> okay. But uh, also, uh, I want to point out the save points. Um, one of my biggest issues was they put the save points in certain areas where they'd be in close, like closed off spaces, I guess you would say, or tight spaces. Tight spaces is the best way to explain that one. And so you had to go, you know, past it a couple times. And every time you swam past it- It would save. Yes, it would save. And, you know, it would pause for that moment, even if you had something following you or whatever. And then, you know, you lost that second because it had to take time to save. And that was one of my biggest issues was that I wish they would have moved the save spots maybe to only open areas and not in such tight areas that they were in. Yeah, that's a, that's actually a good one. Um, I completely forgot about that. Um, yeah, the save points were kind of a little frustrating at times uh, in their placement. Um and they were kind of like proximity ones. So as soon as you got like over it or directly over it or just like coming up to it, it would start saving. So yeah, that was kind of a jarring and, and a unique way to save, but uh, okay. So let's go ahead and go on to our pros. Um, for me, I think um, it has a beautiful uh, world with great characters and creatures um, that populate it. Um, with not expecting much of the story, um, a standout point of the game w was the the story for me and the lore that they added um, to give the world much more richness. Um, I really enjoyed that. Um, I thought overall the gameplay is terrific and all the uh, upgrades for the sub and uh, Marin were fantastic. Um, I like that kind of stuff, so um, that appealed to me. Um, but I think the puzzles by far are like the greatest part of the game um, for me. Um, everybody knows like I love Limbo, I love Ori, I like these hard puzzler type games. So I thought they were great, sophisticated, um, but not frustratingly hard. So uh, that was a plus for me. Um, also, the price point is spot on for this game. Like it's like fifteen dollars for like a ten hour game. Um, that's such great value for the gamers. Um, what about you, Shiwa? What, what pros did you have? Uh, I had a few pros. Um, one, just the whole overall look of this game was just gorgeous. It was elegant, and it drew me in just from the start of it, just by the story that they started off telling about this little girl. Because, you know, we have kids. I can relate to being, you know, a parent and just hoping that my child would, you know, would do the same if something similar happened in course this is a game don't get me wrong but you know just in that instance and the music the music has to be one of my biggest pros because you can just sit back relax and the mood in this music and in this game just it puts you at an ease and it was one of the biggest things that I loved about it and I also loved the fact that the simplicity of understanding the map and how there's not so many categories that you have to go and jump around to 
to find where things are, to get organized, whether you're trying to find a shop or where you're trying to find your spot through the map. There's that easy access for the arrows and stuff like that. So I have quite a few pros when it comes to this game. And like you said, the price. The price is just outstanding for it. Yep, totally agree with uh, all those. So um, I'm going to let you go ahead first on the verdict. Do you think it's a buy, rent, wait for a sale, or flush this turd down the toilet? To me, after playing it, I have to say it's a buy. Sweet. Um, yeah, this game is definitely a buy in my opinion. It has a ton of content, great story. Um, it has replayability for the low cost of like $15. Um, Song of the Deep definitely has the governor's seal of approval. Well, that's it, everyone. We hope you enjoyed this review slash discussion of Song of the Deep. If you did, please drop a submarine on that like button, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and take care of your fellow gamers. We'll see you next time.